So there are five factors affecting soil formation um, and especially the things, the five factors that we're looking for is parent material. So where is the soil, where's the starting point? Where, where is it coming from? The uh, climate is the second factor. And so in our area, we're familiar with our precipitation and temperature regimes. And as far as Arizona soil goes, and as far as Arizona climate goes, we have quite a bit of diversity stretching from uh, the really low elevations in Yuma up to the White Mountains and areas around Flagstaff, the Mogollon Rim, um, where elevations can gain uh, in excess of 12,000 feet. So in our area, um, the precipitation and temperature is very heavily tied to topography, which is also another uh, one of the five factors affecting uh, formation. So topography uh, which would be mountains and hills and valleys and low deserts and um, canyons. All of that topography is elevation that affects um, precipitation and temperature because traditionally in Arizona, as you move up a um, thousand degrees or a thousand feet in elevation, you typically go uh, down about four degrees and vice versa. And also precipitation can be in the southwestern deserts can be as low as an inch to two inches in a year um, and then precipitation can be as high as 25 or 30 inches or more in a, a wet in a wet year at some of the higher elevations or along the uh, eastern borders or in their southeastern arizona and the sky Islands. so um, so so far we have parent material climate topography and then the biota and the, the biota is the plants and animals um, that live in the area and the plants and animals are heavily tied to the climate which is heavily tied to the topography and so the plants and animals have a, an effect on soil formation by um, by their residues their waste how they manipulate the soil and people fall under that category as well the last thing is time how long has a soil been weathered how long has it been um, being interacted by the, the climate? That, that is especially important. How long has it been breaking down or is it a relatively young soil? So we have some different uh, categories like colluvial. Um, for instance, if you look in this picture at the upper elevations, if rocks were breaking off from those higher elevations and forming little pockets of soil by breaking down, that would be colluvium colluvial soils. Uh, you, you also see alluvial soils in this uh, wonderful painting. You see those little drainages representing topography and you see uh, native grasses and stuff growing on the side of that hill. That material is alluvial material um, that's built up there by water draining out. Those are sometimes called in the deserts like uh, bajada. I think is the Spanish term for it. They form alluvial fans. So you see that fanning material coming out from the, uh, from the mountainside and that's water driven. Um, many sandy areas can be wind or water deposited. And so we see that a lot in Arizona. Um, I mean, I think of a, of a sand dune as you head over towards Yuma, you have wind deposited dunes, but you also have water deposited material. And in this, uh, wonderful painting there's a drainage headed down through from the higher lands uh, working its way and you see the cactus so this is probably a, a ritosol type of soil but there would be seasonal water and then sediment caught up in that water especially during times of flash flooding would be depositing um, soil alongside of that uh, that depression and that that drainage may be leading to a larger drainage which may even lead to a permanent stream uh, if this is depicting uh, an Arizona soil. Alright guys, thank you.